This is my second video in my module on making uh, statistical graphs. And in this video, we're going to focus on making what we call a frequency polygon. And then also, we're going to compare and contrast it with the histogram, which is a bar graph. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started by defining what we mean by a frequency polygon. A frequency polygon we have is a graph that displays data by using lines that connect points plotted for the frequencies in the midpoints of the classes. So essentially, this is different from a bar graph in that we're going to use lines and we're going to connect points. And these points, they, they are the frequencies. Okay, so we're going to make a point for each frequency that you see in this table over here. Instead of a bar that goes up that high, we'll just make a point and then we'll connect the dots. Okay, uh, the important thing to note with frequency polygons, this is really important, uh, but it's, it's we plot points for each frequency, but at the midpoints of the classes, the midpoints of the class. Okay, so frequency polygons, we have to know the class midpoints in order to graph them. And also, don't forget class midpoints, we say is this, this X sub M, and we say it's a lower boundary, lower boundary, I'm going to write lower bound, plus the upper bound, basically, upper boundary for each class. We're going to take those, we're going to add those together and divide by two. In other words, we're going to average uh, the boundaries and say that's the midpoint of the class, okay? So then that's exactly what we have written here. You know, add the upper and lower class boundaries and then divide the sum by two. But basically, you know, um, to construct a frequency polygon, let's go ahead and do this. I have the same data that I used in my last video that we constructed a histogram in uh, for the, the high temperatures of all 50 states, you know, where they fall. <clears throat> First thing we need to do before we make our frequency polygon in this instance is not make our x and y axes, but find the midpoints of each class. So we're going to start with the midpoint of the first class here. We say x sub m or the, the middle data, data point here, datum. Uh, we need to average 99.5 and 104.5. So it's not that I need a calculator to do this. We could do this in our heads. But we'll go ahead and say 99.5 plus 104.5. Get the sum of this divided by 2, and we end up having 102 as our class midpoint. So we have 102 will fill us in here. Uh, if we average 104.5 and 109.5, I just want to show you guys something here. Uh, 104.5 plus 109.5 that divided by 2, we get 107. And then one more, we'll just do one more here. And I'll tell you why we only need to do one more the long way. We say, okay, well, the average of 109 and a half, our next class, which is a lower boundary, uh, and 114 and a half. Add those together, divide by 2, we have 112 and a half, or 112, pardon me. Uh, basically, what I want you to see is that these are going up by 5 each time, and that's the same thing as the class width of each class. So we say plus five, you know, you know, plus five, plus five. We could basically just keep adding five onto these now, or at least whatever we determined to be the class width, we could just add that on to our class midpoints to get the very next class midpoint. It's just a nifty way to do things. And you should always stop to see that these class midpoints are actually in between your lower and upper boundaries for the class. So like 117 here, I believe is perfectly between 114 and a half, 119 and a half. So now that we have the midpoints of each class for a frequency polygon, we need to go ahead and start with our x and y axes. So just like we made mm -hmm. our histogram, we're going to go ahead and draw these in here, our x and y axes. We're going to label them appropriately, so that means things like this is our frequency here. I'm going to write a lowercase f. And then down here we had uh, our classes, so we say temperatures. Temperatures. Uh, we could say in degrees Fahrenheit. But these are our classes down here. The interesting thing is that this time, we're actually going to uh, put the class midpoints on the graph, and that's what we're going to use here. So you notice here it says label the x-axis with the midpoint of each class, and then use a suitable scale on the y-axis for the frequency. So, for example, uh, we are skipping skipping from 0 up to uh, 102, so we're going to put a squiggle in from, from there out to 102, but we say 102, we have 107, we have 112, 117, 122, 127, we have 132 as our last midpoint. And then also, uh, we just want to, <coughs> excuse me, make sure that we do this. Uh, but the, the y-axis, we say our highest frequency is 18. Make sure we choose a scale for it. And so I'm going to go by fives in this instance. So 5, 10, try evenly space it this time, uh, 15, 20. So now our third step here is it says use the midpoints for the x values and the frequencies of the y values to plot the point. So essentially what we're saying here is that 102, which is the midpoint of the first class, we had a frequency of 2. So instead of putting a bar up this time, we're actually just going to put a dot at what we feel is the height of 2. Okay, So we say 2, the next one was at a height of 8. So at 107 here, which is the midpoint of the second class, we have a frequency of 8. So 8 here. And then we say the next one is 18, 18. And then we have uh, <clears throat> 13 is next. So 13 above this dot here, 13. And we have 7, which is about 7 off the ground. It's about right here for this class. And then we have 1, 
and then one. Okay, so the interesting thing about a frequency polygon is this, and step four here, it says connect adjacent points with line segments. So that would mean that we want to go ahead and connect this here, and this here, and this here, and this here, and this here. And, uh, and then it says draw a line back to the x-axis at the beginning and the end of the graph at the same distance that the previous and the next midpoints would be located. So essentially, uh, this is just kind of something we tend to do here with frequency polygons. I'm even going to switch over to green, but uh, you just need to remember that we need to do this. You connect down to here, some arbitrary point on the x-axis, and you connect out to here. But we want this to come down to the x-axis so it makes this this, this polygon-like thing, okay? So the red graph is what we have data for, and then we do need to connect it down back to the x-axis there and there. That's how you make a frequency polygon. Oh, by the way, and how this is related to a histogram, if we were to put the bars in, they would look like they would look like this. So essentially, a uh, frequency polygon is, uh, is kind of like the same thing as a histogram, except for the point that you're graphing there is the middle of your bar. It's like the middle of your bar, essentially, because it's the middle of the class. Cheers.